Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome. In this episode, I'm going to be sharing with you 25 dino tips that I hope <laughs> you didn't know about in ARC. Now, I'm mixing these tips up quite randomly, so you get a wide variety of different types of tips. If you guys like these kind of videos, I have more tips I can bring out in the future if you want to see them. And I'm trying to gauge whether these are tips that people don't know or whether they're actually more common than I think. So guys, have a little competition in the comments. Tell me how many of these that you knew. Or, if you're an absolute pro at the game and you're kind of a big deal, that you could raid every one of my base spot guides in 0.0000005 seconds then let me know how many you didn't know i really hope you guys enjoy this episode if you're new around here consider subscribing it's a nice place and let's get into the video number one so with most dinos in this game if they're health slight you can force feed them raw meat to heal them However, there are a few exceptions and Baryonyx is one of them. Force feeding the Baryonyx raw meat won't make a difference to him. For this to work with a Baryonyx, you need to feed him raw fish meat. That will then heal him per eat, as raw meat does to most land dinos. Number 2 If you've watched a lot of my videos before, you'll probably know that I love Moss Chops. They're very overpowered for an early game dino. One of the reasons they're overpowered is that, in addition to their usual levels, they also have an additional harvesting level. Now this means if you whistle the moss chops to harvest something that's leveled up in, it will have more chance of harvesting that item and it will harvest more at a time. A very useful thing if you're struggling to get certain resources early game. Number 3 Spinos have lots of different combinations of damage that they can do. So they can either stand on their back two legs and they'll do a swipe attack, or they can stand on all four legs and they'll bite. Whilst they're on all four legs, they'll be a lot quicker but they won't do as much damage. When they're on two legs, they'll be slower and they won't be able to turn as fast but they're going to do some serious damage. They'll also get a big buff when you go near the water. This will give you a 30 second buff as you can see in the top right of the screen. Now this buff makes them faster and it makes them even stronger so they're going to deal even more damage. Once they've got this buff, they're actually an extremely fast land dino. Number 4 So, to breed Magmasaurs, you need to put them in lava. Now if you play on PvP servers, you don't really want to be dragging your only two Magmasaurs out to a random point of lava. Because if someone sees you with two Magmasaurs in lava trying to breed them, you are dead. And they are dead. Instead, you can have two Fire Wyverns and either two of your tribe mates, or just yourself, but you'll have to move quick. Get both your Wyverns set up close to your Magmasaurs, and keep breathing your fire on one Wyvern until he runs out of stamina, then quickly change to the other Wyvern and carry on. Once this one runs out of stamina, then switch back to your first Wyvern and repeat. It will obviously take him a few minutes to mate, as it would in lava, but it's a lot safer. Number 5 Up until recently, Mammoths were one of the more pointless dinos in Ark, they didn't really do much. But since their recent TLC, a lot has changed with these guys, and they've made them a lot better. One of the interesting new uses of the Mammoth is that when you go in the water, you can spray yourself with its trunk. This will hydrate you without you having to get off the Mammoth. You will also store another one of these water sprays inside its trunk, so that if you need to go somewhere where you're not going to have water for a long time, it stores you an extra load of water, like a water skin. Number 6 if a baby dino is placed inside a female mate boosted Procoptodon's pouch, its food consumption rate will be reduced. As well as that, if you do its imprinting to start with in this pouch, it will give you double the imprinting quality as what it would if it wasn't in the pouch. This gives you a massive head start early on. I've just thrown in some quick facts on the screen about the dinos that can go in this pouch, so feel free to stop the video and familiarize yourself with what can go in the pouches of these Procoptodons. Number seven. So we all know what it's like when you're trying to raid, you've got your trikes there, whatever you're using to soak. They're all low HP and you're just waiting for this damn piggy to eat up quick so that he can heal everything else. Well, very handy. If you load the Daydom with enough food so that it would get to full health if it ate all that food, then go out of render and come back. It will eat all the food in its inventory and now obviously fill up his food bar so that you're ready to start healing again. Number eight. Any creature inside a cryopod will gain 5% more passive experience compared to the same creature not cryopodded. So if you want to level up a dino without actually using it, chuck them in a cryopod while you're out and about. You can then either bring them with you while you're doing things for XP, or just leave them at base, you'll still earn 5% more passive experience. Number 9 Eating a rare flower on arc 
will make everything around you that would normally be passive aggressive to you. Now this will last for 10 seconds as indicated in the bottom right of the screen and it can be very dangerous if you do it at the wrong time. However, if done correctly, this can be really handy for trapping passive creatures to tame, such as the Gallimimus. Because without a rare flower where they're so fast, they can be really difficult to trap. With this, they're going to chase you and you can just lead them straight into a trap. Number 10. Now a very common one, but I know that there's a lot of people who are scared to go in the ocean on an arc. And I'm not surprised, it's a horrible place. But eventually, you're going to need to go in the ocean to get some silica pals. You're going to have to sum up that courage. If you're going in the ocean just for silica pals, then you need to get yourself an angular fish. The only dino that can harvest silica pals, and you don't need to get off them to harvest them yourself. They'll also harvest them a lot faster than you will, so you spend as little time in the ocean as you can. It can be a little bit awkward to tame though, so make sure you familiarise yourself before you go into the ocean. Number 11. So if it's your first time going to kill some penguins or baby penguins, first of all, you're a bad person. Second of all, please don't go using a pickaxe. Early game, it's much more effective to use a club and you'll get a lot more polymer per penguin. Late game, once you can get one, you can also use a sword and this will be even better than a club. But for early game, a club's going to do you just fine. Number 12. So we've all faced the dreaded task of having to harvest honey from a hive. And it's never a pleasant experience. Sometimes it can go okay and you can survive. Sometimes, as soon as you steal some honey, the world around you falls apart. Dire bears, however, don't have this issue. If you're riding on a dire bear, you can harvest a beehive without damaging the hive and thus not making the bees attack you. The bear will also gather a lot more than you will by hand, up to 15 honey per hive. The only downside is sometimes you have to build a ramp up to the hives, but it's not too difficult. Number 13. Remember, if you're living in a place where you're going to struggle to get oil, you can always tame yourself a Basilosaurus or a Tusatuthus. The Basilosaurus being the better of the two for this though, and they will passively produce oil for you. You can also kill a wild Basilosaurus for a lot of oil, but you need to be careful because the mountains around it will swarm you and they'll do some serious damage if you're not careful. Number 14. So if you're playing on a server that wipes frequently, the fight for cementing paste early game can be hell. If you've got yourself a tamed Akatina that's placed on Wandering and either over encumbered or put in a cage, it will passively produce you Akatina Pace at the rate of 1 every minute until it reaches 100. Now this Akatina Pace is a direct substitute to Cementing Paste. So once you can get Sweet Veggie Cakes, which is what it needs to tame them, get yourself some Akatinas and you'll be laughing. Number 15. There are of course other ways of getting Cementing Paste. It is a lot more dangerous however, but if you want to get yourself a Beasel Bufo, and head to wooded areas or more effectively swampy areas. You can hunt down all the bugs around there and as the Beezer Bufo harvests the bugs, it will give you cement in paste. Number 16. Now when they log off at night, a lot of people store their trandons outside. You should obviously always try and put your dinos in a cryopod when you go off, but if not, you don't want them to get killed, so they can fit through double doors. So all you have to do is fly up to the double door, then look directly downwards and it will fly through it. That way, you can keep your trandon safe while you're not there. Remember though, if you can and your base isn't strong enough to defend itself, to cryopod your dinos when you go off, this will make it less likely for people to find you. Number 17. When you're out on your arc adventures, remember to try and keep a lookout for certain dinos that are definitely worth killing. The Gigantopithecus is a good example of this, normally found around Redwoods areas. They're very easy to kill, although they are quite fast, so if you're on foot be careful, and they'll give you heaps of XP for what they are. A Spino is an even better dino to kill, However, remember that they are extremely fast. If you're on foot and you want to kill one of these guys, try and get up high somewhere where it can't climb because they're not the best climbers. Once they get low on health, they'll also run away very fast. But don't let that fool you too much. You need to be careful because if you try and chase it down and don't kill it quick, it will turn around and then begin attacking you again. Number 18. So if you've got donos that you're just taming purely because you want to get their eggs for kibble, remember that if they're mate boosted, the female will drop eggs a lot quicker. A mate boosted female is considered to drop eggs twice the rate of a non mate boosted one. And that obviously adds up big time if you're using the dinos just for the eggs. Number 19. While we're on the subject of eggs, if you are doing this for the eggs for kibble, if you have an overraptor and you over encumber it and set it to wandering, you can see by the text on the screen that it reduces the interval of laying eggs by a dramatic amount. You can clearly see that this is working because the overraptor as well as the dinos that it's working on will have egg symbols around their name. Number 20. We're nearly there guys. So for me, my early game and arc was made hell by these guys. 
Don't get me wrong, there are other dinos, but these guys seem to be the worst. They're actually very easy to kill. It's easier if you've got a flyer, but you can do it on foot. It's just a little bit more risky. So you're going to put yourself down one stone foundation, and then three stone doorways around it. This is going to be the entrance to your trap. You're going to need a fourth door, but I would bring more in case you misplace your first one. So all you got to do is grab the attention of the Alpha Raptor, lead him into the trap, and then just stand behind it. It'll run into your trap, and you can put the door frame behind him. Now it will attack the stone, but it's got plenty of health, so you won't get through it. Alpha Raptors still have the same damage multiplier to the head that a normal Raptor will have. So even if you've only got a crossbow, these guys are still pretty easy to kill early game. They can also give you some decent rewards and tools for killing them. But at the bare minimum, they're going to give you a lot of hide and a lot of raw prime meat for if you're taming. The one one. So, although this tip does have its uses for certain caves and things, I think this is more added to the game for fun. So, if you tame yourself an Archaeopteryx, you can use this guy as your own little parachute. Though it works like a parachute, it's a lot more agile than a parachute and you can switch directions in the air. So it's a lot more handy. But I can't really think of a time you'd use this much, unless you wanted to get far on your own foot. I think this is more of just a tip to have fun with and mess around with your mates. But nevertheless, this is the kind of thing that makes Ark so unique. Number 22. Now this can actually be very useful early game. So if you tame yourself an Ichthyornis, it can be carried on your shoulder. It has an option on it that you can hunt and retrieve. And it's really handy. You're fishing without even fishing. So you can whistle it to attack a normal fish that will only give you fish meat. It will then go and kill the fish and bring it back to you. You can see that as it's coming back, the fish has a gold aura around it. Now, when you harvest this fish, instead of just giving you normal fish meat, you have a chance to get prime fish meat from it. This also works with small land dinos, like dodos for example. As long as it's on hunt and retrieve, you can whistle it to attack, it will pick up and attack the dodo until it kills it. It will then again bring it back to you, and this has a chance to give you raw prime meat. This can be extremely handy when you want to tame something, but you haven't got the resources or the firepower to kill big things for prime meat. This dodo knows what's coming, GL bro. Yeet. Number 23. So as I'm sure we all found out in our first five minutes of arc, piranhas are not fun. But what I have learned recently is that piranhas are not aggressive to sarcos. They're aggressive to everything else, but not a sarco for some reason. There's three piranhas in this pond with me. Normally, I would be getting my legs chewed off as we speak. But look here, they're nowhere to be seen. If you go over into this corner, you can see they actually try and get away from the sarco. So this piranha's actually just sat in a corner hiding. Look at him. Even when you attack him, he doesn't do nothing. This piranha's in the middle. Who do you think you are? Get in the corner, boy. And look. They just move away from you. Wonderful. Never will I understand how Ark works though, because you chuck yourself a Mosa in here, the king of the ocean, and now they want to kill you. Stupid ass. Number 24. Now I'm not going to lie to you, I don't even want to know how this works. Although I kind of do. Anyway, a tame Dipocalus will restore you with oxygen. So say you haven't got a scuba gear yet, but you want to go down into the ocean, you can have your Diplocalus following you. Then, whenever you're running out of oxygen, you just go up to it and tap E, and it will transfer a portion of his oxygen into your oxygen, and you can breathe again. Try and get yourself a decent level Diplocalus though, so that he has a lot of oxygen and more health so that you can survive things attacking it. If you haven't got scuba and you haven't got the flippers, it would also be ideal if you had a tame that you was riding yourself, like a dolphin or something similar. That way, you can still get around quick and have the oxygen from the Diplocalus. Number 25. Now, Equus are a very common first tame on Ark, especially if you're on maps like Ragnarok when you have easy access to rock carrots. Everyone knows these are great because their kicks deal a lot of torpor damage, but you can also equip them with a saddle. This is often overlooked because you don't actually need to equip them with a saddle to ride them. But when they are equipped with a saddle, they'll act as a pestle and mortar, which can be very helpful. With just some simple thatch and fibre, you can also make a lasso for these guys. Now this can be extremely helpful for taming, because say if you've knocked something out in an awkward spot and you didn't want to knock it out there, you can lasso it whilst you're on your Equus. Once you've lassoed it, you can ride away and it will drag it with you and you can drag it to a safer spot. So that's gonna wrap up this video guys. I really hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please don't forget to leave it a like and consider subscribing if you're new. Also remember to let me know how many of these you knew. Let's see which one of you guys is the biggest art fair in round here. But for now, this has been 25 Dino Tips. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.